Hello, hello. This is us reviewing the OIA oh yeah, and what it means for people writing games with LibGX for it. This is the Nate. Looks a little bit like Crumpy Cat. <laughs> yeah, he's always menacing me with this fucking knife. He's currently watching porn, I guess. But anyways, um, this is the OIA oh yeah, console. This is the gamepad. I think you would have guessed. So the console is pretty pretty small, so if you compare it to Nate's head, for example, which is huge, the console really looks small. It's really small. Um, it has a couple of connectors in the back, so there is the power connector, an Ethernet port, micro USB, a standard USB, and the HDMI out for audio and video. On the top, there's the power button, and there's a little fan in there, I'm not sure if you can see it. There's the little fan on the Tegra 3. Nvidia, which is rumored to be overclocked. I'm not even sure if it's a rumor, I think that's fact. <coughs> then we have the gamepad itself, a pretty standard affair. You have the O, U, Y, A buttons. Remember that if you use the control extension. You have the D pad, you have the left joystick, the right joystick, both having two axes, X and Y. You have a touchpad. You have a right and a left shoulder button, and you have a right and a left uh, trigger trigger on the back, which are also reported as axes as well as buttons. Um, you also have triggers here, so those things like buttons as well if you push them. So that's about it. Let's hook. It. So I hooked up my OEA to my TV. Nate is being funny again. Okay. So hooked it up to my TV. There's the power plug and the HDMI. Um, the power plug likes to fall out a lot, so if you disconnect anything like the USB uh, cable or an Ethernet cable, it usually comes out with it, which turns your OIA off. Um, to turn it on, just press the little power button on the top. Hope for the best, and it should now start up. Oops. And it also has a nice clove. So that's what you see uh, if you have a developer uh, kit or a developer console. Uh, it's all preliminary, you shouldn't take this as the final version, blah blah blah. Um, to pair your controller, you just press this system button, which I omitted in my review previously. So just hold it down, things will light up like crazy, eventually it will settle and pair. Sometimes it won't pair, um, so you just go into the menu and reconfigure stuff. So it's now connected, and I can use the D-pad and the left, oops, left joystick to move around the menus. I want to skip this? Don't care. Okay, so we will be presented, I think, with the game screen. Yeah. So there are currently no games. So we go back to the main menu. Oh, by the way, uh, most of the launcher UI has buttons on the bottom of the screen, and shows you what to, to press here. To go to a specific uh, screen. So I want to go back to the menu, so I press A, which is also the back button, so to speak, in their interface guidelines. I think it even uh, sends a back button key code to your Android activity. Um, so this is the OEM menu as it is at the moment. It's not the final version, it's a little confusing because you have games, apps, and store, uh, and settings, and dev. Anyways, those are probably the things that will end up in the final version. The devs thing is only for the dev kit and settings. I'm not sure what they will expose there. So we've already seen games. Apps and store are pretty much non-functional as well at the moment. Um, well, actually, games and apps will show any applications and games you installed on the OEA, which have the manifest uh, modifications I talk about in the blog post. So let's look into settings first. There's manage your account, so you have to register an account with OEA, and that will manage all your uh, games and apps and so on and so forth, at least that's what I assume. You have system settings, and there you get device information, MAC address, Bluetooth, MAC, and so on and so forth. You have, oh, it doesn't remember, okay. <laughs> you have the Wi-Fi settings, um, which is just a plain Android um, settings, really. 
um, you have Bluetooth settings, which you might use quite often. So if your controllers don't pair, just connect a USB keyboard or mouse and go to that. That should work. And you can ask for system updates, which is handy. So that was the system settings dialog, and there's also debug that you can reset, I think, um, tokens for in-app purchases and also reset the launcher. Good, that's the settings menu. Now we're back at the main menu. Oh, this is our little friend, the hardware cursor. Uh, it's shown when you touch the touchpad. So you essentially have a mouse here. You can actually use it just like a mouse or a touchpad on your or a laptop. Okay, so we're now in the developer settings that will probably not end up in the final build. So there's a couple of options here. We have builds. I have no idea what it does. Oh, it brings up this. Yeah. Um, you also have an on-screen <coughs> keyboard, which you can control with the D-pad, and the sticks, and so on and so forth, which is pretty handy. I'm not sure why I want to go in there, so I just... Okay, I can't. Interesting. Um, let me cancel that for you. I can't... Yeah, so this is all very preliminary, so there are a couple of weird things going on. I'm not quite sure what I'm supposed to do now. Let's see. Turn. Okay, so keyboard is gone. I'll just press the cancel. And I press it again. And I press it again. And one more time. And one more time. It doesn't like me cancelling it. Okay, so let's try the back button, which is the A button as we heard previously. Good. So that was built. Nothing interesting in there. Software is cool because it allows you to site load applications. Um, it also shows any applications that you installed so far even if they don't have the manifest uh, modification, so that allows you to sideload stuff. They have a browser integrated, which is pretty decent. You can even go to YouTube and uh, HTML5 video and so on and so forth. All works, downloads, and some applications are installed. Before we launch any of those, let's go back here. Then you can go to News, which just opens the browser and points you at the OEA um, development site and the intro video. And that's pretty much all there is so far. Um, yeah. So, a couple more things I wanted to show you. Um, let's just start our libgx tests software. There we go. So, all of this is working. There's not a single problem with it because it's just plain Android. The entire launcher is a user land uh, application that you can also install on normal Android devices, so there's not a lot specific to OEA really in that regard. Not sure how much they have to change in the, in the system itself, like if they touch the kernel or something. Interestingly enough, they don't provide you with a system image or the RAM, <laughs> so that's interesting considering that they're using GPL software as well. Um, yeah, so the most interesting part here is probably the gamepad test, which I'll just show you. It's a fancy little application that displays how many controllers are currently connected. I currently only have one. And it will report the axis you pressed. Now, if you press one of those joysticks and let it go back to the center position, it might be that it's not actually totally at the center position, as you can see. So in their default position, it might not report zero for the axis, which is common for many gamepads. So you have to use something like a dead zone don't expect the values to be exactly zero. D-pad is just buttons, really. The same is true for the O, Y, and so on buttons. The triggers are actually axes, but also buttons. So you can hopefully kind of see. Focus. Okay. Same is true for this. And then there's the touchpad, which currently is only reported if you use it like this. So you can actually double tap and then just drag, which is equal to a touch event on normal Android touch screens. Um, we currently don't expose the movement of the cursor when it's not um, dragged. Um, we might add that as additional access to the controller's uh, extension. Anything else? Yeah. So there's no way to go back <laughs> because uh, this button is wallet. Usually it would trigger a back key uh, event we eat that in the GDX controller extension. So you have to make sure that you actually have some kind of way of getting out of the application, which might not be necessary because if you hit 
this button here, the system button, you get back to the um, get back to the main menu, from where you can go back into the software, just start things up again. Okay, so if I had batteries, which I clearly don't, <laughs> I could show you what happens when you uh, connect the second uh, OU controller or really any other Bluetooth enabled or USB device. <coughs> Uh, it would just light up in this little application and tell you there's a new event coming in. So, yeah, that is that. Okay. Um, what else is there to say? Yeah, we could maybe try out something more performance intensive to get a little bit of an idea what's happening. So I go to GDX test and run the awesome bullet test. Of the utils bullet test collection by Xopa. Um, so this is bullet, and you can throw a couple of things around here, and it's all pretty stable, no matter how many. Yeah. A lot of balls, lots and lots of cubes as well. Touchpad is not super easy to control, so if they said I think they will increment the velocity of it a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, soft body physics, cloth simulation, all that shit is actually in the GX now. <laughs> Who would have known? <laughs> um, yeah, that's about it. Okay, and I think that pretty much covers all the things you need to know. So, controller, system button for pause, eventually. Been sending, uh, they will send us an intent, we will cover that, send you a pause event. Um, buttons, triggers, shoulder buttons, analog six. That's all you need to know. Plus the additions to the manifest file. Okay, there's one more thing I want to show you. I adapted um, the GDX Invaders demo real quick to have controller support. So yeah, that's it in its full 1080p glory. Press the button, and there's the little chip, and I can use the stick. It runs at full 60 frames per second. Um, I'm not sure the camera can actually pick that up, so there's no, no real issues here. It's not exactly super complex, so <laughs> that's to be expected. So yeah, that's it. One last thing, the browser, it's hidden on the software, Just navigate there, open it up. There's an address bar which might disappear from time to time. I've not found a reliable way yet to bring it up all the time, so yeah, sometimes it just hides halfway. Um, let's go someplace fancy, there we go. Using this with the gamepad is not very enjoyable, so you might want to hook up a mouse at least to it, maybe a keyboard um, as well, if you want to do some heavy browsing on it. Other than that, it works pretty well. Um, you can also watch HTML5 video, I think it's HTML5 actually. Um, so I'm already here, why didn't I reload this? And one interesting thing when you play back, say, YouTube videos, if they are HD, and you play them in full screen. Uh, God, there we go then the resolution is actually changed to 720p. Uh, if you have a fill rate limited game, that might be a nice solution to uh, increase your frame rate if there was a possibility to change the resolution of the screen. I haven't found any APIs yet to do that, so yeah, maybe the OEA guys can shed some light on that. <laughs>